used in a kind of loose sense. Okay, so question nine. Uh, two lines have equations given like that, where A is a constant. Find the value of, not A, alpha, sorry. Find the value of alpha in each of the following cases. If the lines intersect at the point 7, 7, 1. Well, um, actually, I, I, yeah, I didn't twig straight away. But this is what I wrote when I was doing this question. I wrote that the intersect at point 7, 7, 1, so 3... Uh, plus 2 lambda equals 4 plus mu. We've got 5 plus lambda is 10 minus mu. And we've got minus 1 plus lambda is 19 plus alpha times mu. And I thought, right, I'm going to have to solve all of these. And then I realised that that would be over the top, really, wouldn't it? Because they intersect at the point 7, 7, 1. So, so what I, I forgot was that these two equations equal 7, that equals 7, and that equals 1. So I'm actually I'm already well on the way to solving this. I don't need to do too much simultaneous equation stuff. Um, in fact... If 4 plus mu is 7, I can get mu equals 3 straight away. And of course 10 minus 3 is also 7, so I'm sure it's right. So now I can sub that into the last equation. 19 plus 3 alpha must be equal to 1. And I can get my value of alpha really quickly without going through all the normal solving all of these equations kind of thing. Alpha is negative 6. There we go. The answer dropped out satisfyingly quickly if you spotted that actually you were given the points so you just needed to find out the value of mu that it worked for. Part 2. Um, so they don't intersect now at the point 7, 7, uh, 7, 7, 7, 1. But what we do know is the angle between their directions is 60 degrees. So when we do the angle, remember we've got this thing that says that cos theta is a dot b over magnitude of a times magnitude of b. So that's what we're going to use, where um, cos 60 is a half, where a is the direction of the first vector, so that's 2, 1, 1. Uh, and B is the direction of the other one, which is 1 minus 1 alpha. So that's, that's all we're doing. We're putting that into this formula to give us a half is 2, 1, 1 dotted with 1 minus 1 alpha over the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. Have I, have I, yeah, I've got that right, sorry, times the square root of 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus alpha squared, which gives us a half, is 2 minus 1 plus alpha, that's 4, 5, so that's root 6, and that is 2 plus alpha squared, square rooted. So that's where we're up to. If I do a quick little bit of rearranging of this, then I think I've got root 6, root 2 plus alpha is equal to, um, this, is, this is 1 plus alpha, isn't it? So doubling it gives me 2 plus 2 alpha. That's where I think I'm up to. How do I solve that equation for alpha? What's wrong, Phil? Alpha alpha yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, alpha squared. Oh, that was careless. That should be an alpha squared. Um, how do I solve an equation where my unknown is inside a big square root thing? Well, I square both sides. If I square both sides, I get 6 times 2 plus alpha squared is this squared, which is 4 plus 4 alpha plus 4 alpha, so 8 alpha plus 4 alpha squared. At which point I notice I'm ending up with a nice quadratic equation. 12 plus 6 alpha squared is 4 plus 8 alpha plus 4 alpha squared. So 2 alpha squared minus 8 alpha plus 8 
plus 8 is 0, which has a common factor of 2. Alpha squared minus 4 alpha minus 4 is 0, which factorises as alpha minus 2 or squared. And so alpha equals 2 is the only value that alpha could possibly be. There we go. And we're very happy with that. Okay. Um, the, the places where this went wrong, there were more careless mistakes in there. I know I did it, but there was at least one person who lost the alpha squared at some point in the journey for this. And... The other thing, people seem to struggle with how to get rid of this uh, square root thing here until there was some odd squaring going on to finish that off. There we go, and that's maths.